Hello. So an anonymous human, I assume, sent me this video. American versus uh, European suburbs. And why U.S. suburbs suck. <laughs> My God. I'm kind of offended. I grew up in the suburbs. It wasn't that bad. I guess maybe it is compared to Europe. Let's see. Come on. This is a typical American. I'm going to try not to be like too biased, too offended. <laughs> suburban street. What? This is a typical American suburban street. Okay. I mean, okay. You want to say typical? The fact that there's no sidewalks is not necessarily typical. It's a 50-50 though. There's a lot of suburbs that don't have sidewalks. I'll give them that. But it's 50-50. Some do, some don't. Like, it's about half and half. It's wide. The houses are very far apart and look mostly the same. <laughs> <laughs> look mostly the same. <laughs> That's, in some, it's kind of interesting. Like, depending on where you go from neighborhood to neighborhood, that can be true and that can be very much not true. There's barely anything on the well manicured lawns. Post boxes, a few trees or bushes, and the occasional fire hydrant. True. Maybe a trampoline. Now compared I mean, especially in the front yard. Typically, people keep the stuff in the backyard, like a trampoline or a pool, stuff like this. Front yards really are pretty much wasted space. This to a suburb in Leipzig, Germany. What differences do you notice? Damn. I mean, this looks like the city. It's beautiful, though. Beautiful time of year, too. Look at this. Wow. Fall in Germany. It's cool how there's trees like almost in the sidewalk. First off, there is stuff around you. The streetscape <laughs> is very diverse and mentally engaging. In comparison, the American suburb looks like a desolate urban wasteland. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he's being really harsh. Also in the European suburb, the street is narrow, there is a 30 km per hour speed limit, and the buildings are close together. What's his point about the speed limit? 30 that would be equivalent to what i mean let me see my typing is very slow guys right now i don't know why 18 so 20 that would be the same as a as a suburb in america do you notice the tram tracks in this suburb, you can live car free. If you want to go to the center, you can either take the tram or ride your bike for 20 minutes. Now that's cool. That's really cool. Dedicated bike lanes. You certainly don't have trams in the suburbs here in America. No. You don't have trams, period, except when you do, they're kind of a novelty. They're cool. Like, I know there's one in um, Tampa, Florida, because I just got back from there. There was a tram. I was like... Um, but it's like only in the, in the center of the city. Look at the size of this bike or path. Or take the S-Bahn because there's also a train station. In the American suburb, you have no option but to drive. Head out. A train station in the suburbs? Out onto the busiest road, a horrifying mix of street and road, onto the jammed <laughs> highway, and after an hour you'll be- This is indeed a very typical, like- suburban resident residential area this looks just like where i live in the center searching for a parking spot depending how busy it is yeah. how about going to a restaurant in the european suburb there are dozens of different unique local restaurants reachable <laughs> on foot by bike or public transit in the american suburb you're an hour i'm just a little bit confused like how is that possible in a suburb it's like the whole definition of a suburb to me is that you're not in the city you're in like a residential only. By the way, did I say residential earlier? I think I meant commercial, but a suburb is like residential only to me. That's, that's how I see it. So there's no restaurants on foot near you. Like there's only houses, but maybe that's just in America. Or walk away from a chain restaurant next to a busy road. If you want to eat, you gotta get in your car. Yes, for sure. 
pretty much. What if you have children? In this European suburb, there are three schools close by. Kids can walk or bike there on their own and learn to be independent early on. In the American suburb, a child could get to school after 35 minutes of walking, mostly along a busy arterial road, also having to cross... <laughs> You'd be extremely lucky to be only, what, a mile and a half? 35 minutes of walking? That would be very lucky to be that close to a school. Was a six lane strode and somehow i mean there's no crosswalk so kids have to be driven to school every day by mommy and daddy no 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 you take the school bus the same goes for sports over here kids can take a 10 minute walk to the nearest sports field or a three minute bike ride on calm, safe streets on their own in the u.s it's a 40 minute march through a maze of streets partially along a major transit uh what was that hold on Everybody's okay. Artery. Got it. US, it's a 40 minute march through a maze of streets, partially along a major transit artery. Gotta get in the SUV and let mommy drive you to practice. This is where <laughs> the term soccer mom originates from. By that, now that's true. Like if you're going to an extra, extracurricular, oh my gosh, I can't say that word. Extracurricular sport or activity, you're pretty much gonna need mom and dad to drive you and you'll probably pass by a Walgreens by the way, people lament today's children for being overly dependent on their parents. But in such neighborhoods, children don't have a choice but to be dependent. Otherwise, they cannot go anywhere. They are stuck at home. In contrast, in... I mean, I will say, as, as a kid myself, I feel like this is partly a cultural thing too, because as a kid, I used to run around the neighborhood. I have so much good memories of like going over to my friend's house, walk, walking to my friend's house. Yes, walking. <laughs> um... Knocking on his door, being like, can Billy come out and play, Joey? And um, we'd run around the whole neighborhood, huge neighborhood, go go to our friend Chase's house. And um, get all the kids together and play a giant game of hide and seek or capture the flag. Stuff like this. So I'm just saying, like you can, we didn't walk to, you know, any type of, uh, business but we would walk around the neighborhood and do things and play in european suburbs kids can be let out safely to move around on their own to go to places they want to without the need for the mommy and daddy taxi service now that's different do note that yellow residential building on the left that is a mid-rise european suburbs tend to be a mixture of those and single or multi-family homes like on this street it's almost like this is just a different name because to me to, in America, this would just not be called a suburb. This would be called like a city. Zoning in US or a town. Suburbs only allows for single family homes, and they are usually placed very far apart, leading to low density and long distances. This makes public mm -hmm. transportation non viable. Over here in Europe, yeah. hundreds of people live within walking distance of this tram stop. In the US, if you put a tram stop here, you'd have a few dozen people living within walking distance. Meaning, even if you built public transit here, almost nobody would yeah. take it because no matter how you build it, people would be too far away from it. If yeah, that makes sense. If you're half an hour away on foot from the nearest tram stop, you'll take your car instead. And people do. So giant highways have to be built, rammed right into the city, usually demolishing non-white neighborhoods in the process. <laughs> the end result... <laughs> okay. ...have to be built, rammed right into the city, usually demolishing non-white neighborhoods. <laughs> I, I won't touch that. I don't know about usually, but I'm sure, I'm sure that's true. <laughs> to some extent. Um, what was I going to say? Just wasn't expecting that comment. <laughs> what was I going to say? Do. So giant highways have to be built, rammed right into the city, usually demolishing non-white neighborhoods in the process. The end result I was going to say, I guess I, in Europe, you guys just don't have what we would call a typical suburb with just a bunch of houses spaced pretty far apart, you know, on a quarter acre lot. It's all spaced apart. And that's the only thing there and that whole area um is other houses and that's your neighborhood and you guys just don't have that so it was mass motorization all across america constant traffic jams noise and pollution but not for the suburbanites it was the urban dwellers particularly those who were poor who had to live near high traffic areas in cheap low quality housing the suburbs also became a growth ponzi scheme where in <laughs> um 
houses in the middle of the city are are much more expensive typically like residential condos and apartments this type of thing to purchase in the middle of a busy city those are by far the most expensive income from the suburbs couldn't cover future infrastructure overhauls so the city had to expand and sell new properties constantly to get enough money to maintain what they already have not just bikes did a great video about this link in the description the suburbs and core centric development were useful political I'll have to watch that. tools in the 1950s to enforce a christian conservative white nationalist hierarchy within american society where white men are on top women are at home fully dependent on their husbands and where all resources are channeled towards the white middle and upper class in the form of billions in state subsidies and the rest of society poor people non-whites were left to fend for themselves in decaying urban centers sucked dry financially by the parasitic suburbs around them core centric planning became a oh my wow that was a very um what's the word i'm even looking for like destitute pessimistic outlook on the suburbs damn i never heard anything like that before uh I mean, I'm sure there is truth to it since back, you know, when when all of these systems were being constructed, there were there was a lot of racial issues and stuff in America. The weapon of choice for conservatives in order to maintain the unequal status quo. And this phenomenon isn't unique to America. In Europe, as our cities transition away from cars, the opponents of this change are almost always conservatives. While the incumbent Ferris mayor campaigned on eliminating 50,000 parking spaces, her conservative opponent, who looks frankly diabolical even by French standards, <laughs> wanted to halt decongestion measures. In Prague, a city overrun by cars, conservatives keep screaming about the cyclo-fascists ruining the city after a shadow is painted somewhere. Meanwhile, conservative district mayor... That sounds like a... That's ridiculous. Wow. I mean, wow. Here's our a cyclist, cyclist ruining the city. Yeah, okay. Busy turning sidewalks into parking lots. In Madrid, the conservative city leadership cancelled the ultra low emission zones, leading to local protests to bring them back. In Budapest, we have Orban's far right conservatives screaming about how there is a witch hunt against drivers by the new center left mayor and complaining how in inner city Budapest it's almost faster to walk now than to drive. Even in Germany, Bavarian conservatives are dumping. <laughs> it's faster to walk than drive. I'm a little bit, I'm trying to like watch this unbiased and I'm trying to just depict like decipher exactly his point. But um, if it's faster to walk than drive, then I could see why the people driving would be upset. But hey, I guess you should just walk at that point. But if they're purposely making driving that slow, then I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> money into highways while letting the rail network fall into disrepair. Is a rule of Orient concern? Like, I, I'm in favor of both walkers and drivers. Do whatever you want. But, in general, driving infrastructure does tend to take up a lot more space and cause a lot more, um, you know, it's, it's in, inefficient in terms of space. So, yeah, in that sense, it's worse. Conservatives are dumping money into highways while letting the rail network fall into disrepair. As a rule of thumb, in every city with decongestion measures, you also find conservatives screaming about the war on cars. Barbecue beer freedom. <laughs> this guy has to be American. <laughs> thumb. Might be my neighbor. In every city with decongestion measures, you also find conservatives screaming about the war on cars. The, the war on cars. See here in America I've never I've never even heard of that. The war on cars. The symbol of cars are just like it's a pretty nonpartisan issue. Now, electric cars versus gas, that's starting to become like a thing that people talk about. Of hierarchy in transportation, where the affluent suburban minority gets to occupy 80% of public space inside cities, compared to the more egalitarian space use of public transit and bicycles. God forbid you have to get out of your ah. giant SUV of death and get on a tram with the peasant. <laughs> of course, up <laughs> Holding the conservative hierarchy isn't why suburbs are built today in the US. It's mostly just a necessary continuation of the Ponzi scheme that began with the first suburbs. Also <laughs> the I, I agree with his what he, what he just said there. Like, um, at this point, the US is very reliant on cars and the whole system we got going. It would be really hard to flip it all around at this point. Um, 
It's funny how he calls it the suburban Ponzi scheme. <laughs> in the US, it's mostly just a necessary continuation of the Ponzi scheme that began with the first suburbs. Also, it's due to faulty zoning codes, not allowing for mid-rise developments that would actually make more money for the city, increase density, and make public transit viable. In Europe, our suburbs are mixed with both mid-rises, single and multi-family homes. They're an organic part of the city and contribute fairly to the local budget. There is also subsidized affordable public transit. All in all, it's more egalitarian. And if the US situation sounds depressing in contrast, as an American, there are things you can do to potentially help change things. If there is a local transit riders union, go join it. Look if never heard of it. There are any initiatives on the ballot for traffic calming, bike lanes, etc. Show up to your local. Never seen anything like that on the ballots, at least here in Indiana. Town hall meetings and advocate for zoning reform, ending parking minimums, and so on. If you're persistent enough, your ideas will be heard, and you can help push America back towards sensible, fair, more egalitarian urban planning, one neighborhood at a time. That's what I would do if I were you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't know, there's just something funny about that's what I would do if I were you. Well, I mean, you're not me. <laughs> What about what I would do if, what about what you would do if I was you? Uh, anyway, I don't know. That was an interesting video. He he definitely made some points. I feel like certain points were like a little bit off. Like saying kids need to be driven to school. Obviously, most kids take the school bus. Some kids, once they reach a certain age. I, well, I took the school bus at, all through kindergarten to 12th grade. School bus every day. So, yeah. Some kids get driven in high school or they'll get a car when they're 16 and drive themselves in high school. Thank you for watching, guys. That was, um, wow. I feel personally attacked, but I enjoyed it. I actually really enjoyed that video. It was like a healthy debate-ish feeling, you know? Like I like being, I like I like my American just like world views being challenged. So I really enjoyed that. Adam something, go check out Adam something. <laughs> In this video, I explain why European suburbs are objectively better in any way imaginable. Um, thanks for watching.